Hebrew invertebrates. And so we're looking for, if we break down that word, I'm sure you know that an invertebrate is an animal without a backbone. So they have an exoskeleton. Um, macro means that they're small, but big enough you can see without the aid of a microscope. And then benthic means bottom dwelling. So in the wetlands and in the marsh are lots of different types of organisms. So in the water, we could expect to find some uh, insect larvae, lots, lots of little things. So what we like to do with uh, the school groups that come out here is look for those, those really small creepy crawly things. And what's really neat about them is that they're also bio indicators. And bio means life. And so they, they let us know how, how good the water quality is. And so when we get back inside, we'll kind of take a look. So we're going to see what types of My son Jonas, he's in sixth grade and he's out here helping me today. So we, we kind of take these strainers and um, basically kind of pull up the aquatic invertebrates like to live among the, the cattails and the reeds. So we kind of scoop up around there and then uh, we look for kind of the things that are squirming around and we very gently use our tweezers. So Jonas, what's that? them here in our ice cube tray and then we'll take them into our classroom later and identify them better and uh, put them up on the big screen so we can see whether the dragonfly naiad in there also. Let's show the camera. Here is what we found after looking in the marsh for about half an hour. Remember how I said wetlands are one of the most biodiverse ecosystems on our planet? And even the smallest organisms are really important. In fact, most of these end up as a food source for the birds that come to depend on Cheyenne bottoms. Some of our birds fly for thousands of miles and then stop and rest to eat and refuel before they continue on their journey. This invert is very important to Cheyenne bottoms. Here is a tool scientists can use to identify things they don't know. It's called a dichotomous key. Kind of like a choose your own adventure story. You get two choices and based on identifying characteristics, you make a choice to ID the specimen. So you start at one. Is this big enough? We don't need a microscope to see? Yes. So we go to choice two. If we needed a microscope, it would likely be a seed shrimp, copepod, or water flea. So here we are at two. Does it have a shell? No. So go to three. Does it have legs? If so, we would go to four. But these guys don't have legs. So which one does it most look like? I think it looks most like a non-biting midge larva or bloodworm. Though these aquatic inverts go through a metamorphosis where they start out as eggs and the baby or larva looks different from the adult. We think these bloodworms are so important we even have an exhibit at our center devoted to them. In the month of June we can find as many as 65,000 bloodworms in a square meter, which is only a 3 foot by 3 foot area. That is a lot of food for our bird visitors. Remember that dragonfly naiad Jonas found? Here it is. This is a baby dragonfly. Both the larva and the adults are very beneficial to the wetlands. Both are carnivorous and one of their favorite foods are mosquitoes. The naiads eat mosquito larvae and the adults eat the flying mosquitoes. Dragonflies are our friends. If we go back to our dichotomous key, we have to go all the way to question 6 to ID them. Does this have a tail or no tail? This guy has no obvious tail, but a very large body. Something else this key does is tell us the pollution sensitivity of the invert. I mentioned earlier, these can be bioindicators and let us know about the quality of water. Dragonflies are a three, meaning they are very tolerant of pollution. Does that mean the water at Cheyenne Bottoms is poor quality? Let's keep looking. This is a damselfly. They are very closely related to dragonflies, and often get called that, but look at how they hold their wings up instead of out. I love how their body is really translucent. You can see inside and how their body systems are connected. This invert has three tails, which helps us ID it. Look at those big eyes. It also has a very tolerant to pollution rating. One last critter to look at. I'm glad we found him. This is a mayfly. Something neat about mayflies is that as adults, they do not have functioning mouth parts, so the adult never eats food. They emerge from the water, molt into adults, find a mate, and then sadly die. Their larvae can live for a long time in the water. Let's look at our sensitivity chart. Mayflies are a nine. They are very sensitive to pollution, meaning the adults lay their eggs in clean water. Hooray!